Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, has ambitious goals to establish a human colony on Mars during his lifetime and has his sights set on sending 1 million people to the Red Planet by the year 2050. But recently, NASA has made a terrifying discovery on Mars that has put Musk's plans in jeopardy. The research on space travel and exploration appears endless. NASA and Elon Musk have kept their hands on the desk to uncover precise discoveries about Mars. Musk's ultimate goal is to make humanity a truly multi-planet species. We can't be that if we can't survive on Mars. Musk and NASA are making great strides in their efforts to determine whether or not life has existed on Mars and whether or not it might exist again. Understanding this is crucial to the tech billionaire's ambition for conquering the Red Planet. And now, they have developed a rover that is assisting in this endeavor. What has NASA's perseverance found on Mars, and how do these discoveries affect you? Stay tuned as we bring you the shocking findings Elon Musk and NASA just made on Mars that shock the entire space industry. So, without any further delay, let's jump right into the video. While you watch this video, there is an autonomous vehicle trudging along millions of miles away on planet Mars. Its name is Perseverance, and it costs a cool $2.7 billion, much more than any vehicle you might see on the road today. Why did NASA spend so much money on Perseverance? Let's find out. When missions to Mars send back pictures, the mountains make up most of what they see and record. The mountains, many of which are active volcanoes, serve a purpose beyond aesthetics, though. A volcanic province can be found on Mars, and it contains many Earth-like features such as craters and earthquakes. So, apart from the obvious, atmosphere and gravity, what are the differences between Earth and Mars? Tharsis is a volcanic area on Mars that spans about 3,000 miles and contains many of the planet's highlands and volcanoes. Four large volcanic domes may be found in this province, which is located close to the equator. Ascreus Mons, Pavonis Mons, and Arcea Mons are three of the volcanoes that stand in a line, with Ascreus Mons being the tallest at about 11 kilometers. However, Olympus Mons is the tallest mountain in Tharsis. The 16-mile-high Olympus Mons, about three times as high as Mount Everest, is located to the northwest of the three massive volcanoes. It has a diameter of around 375 miles and a 50-mile-wide caldera on top, making it the largest mountain in the solar system. Over 115 million years ago, when the caldera was still over two miles deep, lava last erupted there. The canyons on Mars are just as spectacular as the planet's towering mountains. Over 2,500 kilometers long, up to 120 kilometers broad, and up to 4 kilometers deep, Valles Marineris is a canyon system. During the time that Mars was cooling, the Tharsis area formed right adjacent to the canyon as a tectonic crack. A river of water or lava may have flowed past it at a later time. Besides the canyons, there are also many impact craters. Hellas and Argyre, two of the most prominent, were formed roughly 3.9 billion years ago. In contrast to Earth, where impact craters have been buried by plate tectonics, Mars's surface still features all of its craters in their original locations. As a result of these factors, landing on Mars is a challenging endeavor. It can be difficult to find a landing site on Mars that is both safe and scientifically intriguing. The landing area needs to be relatively flat, without many pebbles that could cause the lander to crash. Chrysi Planitia, or the Plains of Gold, is an impact crater located northeast of Tharsis and Valles Marineris. The area once had a steady flow of water. The first pictures of the Martian landscape, including its rocks, dust, and sand dunes, were transmitted back by the Viking 1 spacecraft in 1976. The Mars Pathfinder lander and the Mars Sojourner rover explored Ares Valles, a massive outflow channel that flows into Chrysi Planitia. Barnacle Bill and other nearby geological formations were found to have compositions very similar to andesite, a type of volcanic rock found on Earth. The first basaltic rock discovered on Mars was Yogi, the other rock analyzed. The landing area was marked by rounded pebbles, indicating the presence of water in the distant past. 
The other finding is that the dust is magnetic. Another enormous impact crater, Utopia Planitia, measures over 2,000 miles in circumference. Utopia Planitia was explored by Viking 2 around the same time that Chrysi Planitia was being mapped by Viking 1. Every morning, the stony surface is dusted in frost, and the landscape seems completely alien. Subsurface water ice melted, maybe as a result of a quick encounter with the low surface pressure, leaving behind scallops. More proof of water's presence in Utopia Planitia's subsurface was revealed in 2016 by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Before that, in 2004, the Gustav Crater on Mars was chosen as the landing site for the Mars Exploration Rover Spirit. Hermatite, a mineral discovered by Spirit, can only develop in the presence of water. Opportunity landed on Mars' opposite side to investigate the Meridiani Planum region, while Spirit investigated the planet's largest crater, Gusev. Over 10 smaller craters were explored by Opportunity before the same result was found. Gray hermatite containing signs of former water. The rover then proceeded to Gale Crater, a feature that formed between 3.5 and 3.8 billion years ago. It has a diameter of roughly 93 kilometers and has shown signs of past water presence. Water-rich sands, organic compounds, and sedimentary layers suggest that this might be a dried-up lake bed. An iron-rich core lies beneath Mars's crust and mantle. The density is around 4 tons per cubic meter, and the composition is remarkably Earth-like. Some rocks in the earliest regions are magnetic, suggesting that a magnetic field formerly existed there. Magnetized surface crater counts indicate that Mars' dynamo shut down at 4 billion years ago. The seismometer was deployed by the Mars InSight mission in 2018 to monitor for Marsquakes. There were a lot of tremors, but the Marsquakes were completely unique, as was the process by which they were translated into human hearing. The surface of Mars is highly irregular, possibly from earthquakes or storms, and there's abundant evidence of a once abundant water supply. What the Perseverance rover has accomplished thus far and what the future holds are discussed here. Launching from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on a United Launch Alliance Atlas V-541 rocket at 7.50 a.m. Eastern Time, on July 30, 2020, the Perseverance rover is scheduled to explore Mars. Landing on Mars required a series of complex and nerve-wracking maneuvers, all of which Perseverance successfully completed. Since landing on another planet is difficult, only roughly half of the expedition's dispatch to the Red Planet have made it there. Seven minutes of terror were experienced by the robot during this time. Ground control lost contact with the rover Perseverance as it descended through the Martian atmosphere, effectively knocking it offline during its final descent to the Red Planet. The rover successfully landed without any help from Earth because of a communication lag of 11 minutes. It wasn't just Perseverance that landed on Mars. It brought a friend with it, too. Humanity's first powered, controlled flight on another planet was accomplished by NASA's Ingenuity helicopter, which took off from the surface of Mars. About 40 seconds passed during the whole trip. It's not like piloting a helicopter on Earth when you're doing it on Mars. The atmospheric pressure on Mars is only approximately 1% of that on Earth, making its atmosphere much thinner. Not only that, but its gravity is only approximately 40% that of Earth. This necessitated tailoring the Ingenuity helicopter to Mars' unique conditions. As a proof of concept, Ingenuity isn't built to endure, but it will serve as a useful trial run for future trips to Venus and Saturn's moon Titan, both of which have considerable atmospheres and excellent life-supporting conditions. Naturally, it was crucial that Perseverance stay on course with its primary objective. After roughly 200 Martian days, the Perseverance rover drilled through a rock dubbed Rochette and brought back its first two Martian samples. 
During its 687 Earth Day mission on Mars, Perseverance is expected to collect at least 20 samples from the red planet's surface, using its arsenal of 43 titanium sample tubes. The sixth sample from Mars was taken by the Perseverance in December 2021. A few minutes after touching down on Mars, Perseverance sent back the very first photographs it had captured of the red planet. The first photographs from the Perseverance probe showed that there was likely once a delta leading to a lake in Jezero Crater on Mars. Long-distance scans of Jezero Crater revealed telltale signs of an ancient delta on Mars. A closer look at the photographs shows a delta extending into a lake upon closer inspection. The photos showed the next best location for Perseverance to go to gather its samples. The Perseverance is currently en route to the delta, where it will aim for identical rocks at the bottom. The age of these rocks puts them in the early period of Mars's history, when the planet may have been habitable at around 3.9 billion years ago. Perseverance can not only drill into rocks to get samples, but it can also shoot laser beams at them. The SuperCam on the Perseverance has a built-in laser that can blast rocks on Mars from a distance of around 20 feet. A small quantity of rock is vaporized into heated gas called plasma as the laser shoots at the rocks, and the shockwave created by the heat and vibration causes a popping sound. Determination ensured that not one, but two microphones would make it to Mars. The EDL microphones were created to record the strange sounds of Mars and the descent and touchdown of the Perseverance spacecraft. A five-hour recording of Martian environmental noises and the rover's robotic exploration was released by the Perseverance shortly after landing. The Ingenuity helicopter's low-frequency humming was also picked up by the rover's microphones, despite the fact that it was flying more than 260 feet away. The clip includes the sound of the Martian wind blowing across the rover's metal wheels as they traverse the planet's arid terrain. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what do you think about Elon Musk's and NASA's Mars adventure? Will it be successful or not? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.